good afternoon everybody and welcome to session on engineering graphics with me yash chavla so uh, i hope you all had a very good examinations and you all had uh, solved the papers very well so today we will what we'll be doing is we'll be solving the question paper we'll be starting with the solution and uh, we'll be solving half of the paper today in the next two hours and also we'll be discussing a few more examples uh, which have not been solved before and especially for the people who are going to appear in the uh, gtu examinations in this semester that is the second semester uh, i would uh, request them that they should practice the previous year question papers as well so uh the question this exam uh was there on 23rd of uh, january that is exactly a month back today is 24th of feb and uh, it was on 23rd of jan and engineering graphics it was so uh, external examination of uh, gtu uh winter 2012 and the subject code is 110013 so let's begin with the solution of the question paper we'll be solving approximately uh, 7 to 8 questions today and let's see till where we end up okay so the first question uh, there was a very good thing about the paper that uh, there were a lot of theories asked in the paper and uh, a lot of terms were asked to define the applications were asked to uh, be given in the paper that shows that uh, you it's just not the uh, drawing that you have to do but you should learn the application as well if you want to get good marks in the examinations as well as uh, if you want to uh, use this engineering graphics in your uh, career and in your day to day work as an engineer okay so the first question uh, that is question 1a was explain the terms and there were three terms that were asked to be explained eccentricity involute and hypocycloid now before starting the solution there are few uh, instructions that are given in the question paper uh, which have utmost of importance uh, you just had to attempt five of any of the questions so you could attempt any one one two seven the questions are given from uh, number 1 to number 7 so you could attempt any five of them so that is the whole question you have to attempt if you are attempting number 1 you have to attempt 1a 1b 1c and if you are it's not like you can attempt any one of those it's a whole question that you have to attempt then second instruction that is given is make suitable uh, assumptions wherever necessary the data that is data given in the questions are uh, all full but there are some uh, places where you need to assume that uh, what uh, needs to be done so that assumption has to has to be taken by you uh, on your own then the third instruction that is given is of figures to the right indicate full marks the number of marks are given to the right and uh, whenever you are asked uh, definitions or you are asked any uh, solutions in engineering graphics uh, you should remember that that a figure is very necessary wherever you are giving any theory you should explain it or it should accompany by a figure because in engineering graphics the as the name suggests engineering graphics so figure has to be there so let's start def a definition of uh, the three uh, terms that are given in the question number 1a so we'll start with eccentricity now what is eccentricity now if you remember we had studied uh, conics and in construction in construction of conics we had studied uh, construction of ellipse parabola and hyperbola and in that we came across this term eccentricity now how do we define eccentricity now in terms the definition is given on your screen any conic section can be defined as a locus of points uh, whose distance uh, to a point that is the focus and a line are that is the directrix are in constant ratio the ratio is called eccentricity commonly denoted as e now this is the basic definition that should be written now what what is basically eccentricity can be understood by this figure and this ratio that is given now let us first uh, see the ratio the ratio given is e is equal to distance of a point from locus upon distance of a point from directrix now what is the importance of this point now let's see now as you can see on your screen this is the point f which is the focus and this straight line which is there is the directrix now what e gives us is like if i take this point m on this red ellipse the red ellipse that you see now this point m will have a particular distance mf from the focus and it will have a distance m m dash from directrix now if i put it in this ratio above then it will be mf upon m m dash so this ratio will come out to be say something of x i will say that it comes down to a 
x now if i take any other point on this ellipse say i take a point here that is n so f n would be my uh, distance from the focus and i'll take a point here that is n say suppose and then uh, the distance of focus is f n and the distance from the directrix say n n dash so here the ratio that comes out is f n upon n n dash that ratio will also be equal to the ratio m uh, f upon m m dash so that is known as eccentricity it is also applicable to the parabola which is given in green and hyperbola which is given in uh, blue now what eccentricity has uh, its ranges for all these three curves uh, for ellipse eccentricity is smaller than one that it won't be equal to one it is smaller than one and uh, for parabola that is the green line eccentricity is equal to one and for hyperbola that is the blue line eccentricity is greater than one so eccentricity is very uh, essential for drawing these figures and if you have uh, any data in the question then eccentricity is very useful in constructing these three figures okay so let's move on to the next that is involute now what is involute this also i had explained to you along with the animation that you'll see on the next slide involute let's first read out the definition involute is a curve traced out by an end of a piece of thread unwound from a circle or a polygon the thread uh, thread being kept tight it may also be defined as a curve traced out by a point in a straight line which rolls without slipping along a curve or a polygon now see the definition states and the animation let's go to the animation uh, the example is also given the involute of a circle is used as a teeth profile of the gear so that is an application of involute that is there now this next this shows you exactly what uh, involute is now here in the uh, question uh, in the definition that we it was like unwounding of uh, uh, the thread now here it is wounding now if you say wounding and unwounding it follows the same path so it does not make any difference so what is happening here if you see the animation there is a straight line when it begins and then it starts wrapping itself around the circle this straight line it starts from here and then it constantly starts decreasing and it decreases by the margin of the thread that is being deposited on the circumference and this point that is the red point traces this curve which is shown in red this curve is known as the involute and if you uh, do the reverse process again uh, of say this is being wound and if you are unwounding it then also the same figure will turn out so this is known as an involute okay now the involute these are uh, as uh, given in the example these are used for the uh, teeth profiles of the gear so it is a very important engineering applications for especially for mechanical engineers so this is an important application of involute the next that we have is a hypocycloid now uh, what is a cycloid first of all let's understand what is a cycloid now so cycloid cycloid is a curve which is traced by a point on a circle when it is going on any path a path may be defined now according to the path on which it is uh, moving it is given different names like cycloid epicycloid hypocycloid and then there are superior and inferior cycloids uh, epicycloids and hypocycloids now here we have been asked specifically the definition of hypocycloid so what is an hypocycloid so first of all just visualize a, a small circle which is rotating inside another circle just like uh, you can say that there is a small circle which is rolling on the circumference inner circumference of a larger circle so if uh, we take a point on that uh, small circle and we trace the path of that point when it is uh, moving along the circum inside circumference of that uh, bigger circle then the path that is traced by that particular point is known as a hypocycloid okay so the basic definition goes as the curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle this refers to the small circle so the curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle which rotates without slipping inside another circle is called a hypocycloid let's see let us see the definition and the figure this is the animation of a hypocycloid now what is happening is see the green one is a bigger circle and the blue one is a smaller circle 
and you can see that we have taken a point on this smaller circle that is a blue circle and it is oh, sorry and and that blue circle is rotating on the green inside the green circle without slipping now the concept of uh, why without slipping because if it if it slips then the curve won't be uniform so it is specifically mentioned that it should not slip on the circle it should constantly uh, rot uh, ro uh, rotate on the circle so it traces this path which is shown in red that is the point on the blue circle traces this path so this red figure that is traced is known as the hypocycloid okay so these were the three for definitions in the given in the first question so it will now we uh, get to the problem that is the first problem which is uh, there in the question paper that is question number 1b now find the solution of a point p moving in a plane find the locus of a point p moving in a plane such that its distance from a fixed straight line AB and a fixed point remains constant. So now, before starting the solution, as I always say, understand the problem very nicely. What are the things that are given? There is one point which is moving in the plane. Now, it's uh, the path is defined in such a way that there is one straight line given and there is one fixed point given. Now, it is equidistance or say its distance from both the straight line as well as the point always remains constant that is it the if say if the distance uh, between the point that moving point p and the line is say 10 centimeters then the same 10 centimeters would be from uh, the line uh, sorry the point which is there which is the given point so there are three things that are given there is a moving point p in the plane there is a straight line and there is a point and this point P has to move in such a way that it always keeps distance constant that is constant uh, the distance from the line as well as the distance from the point is uh, always constant. So let's now draw the uh, solution of this uh, first problem that is given and let's see that what it comes out to be. Okay, let's we'll use the teletop on this. question this is answer 1b okay now first of all I'll just uh, note down what are the things that are given to me moving point P is given moving point P is given the second thing that is given is uh, say a point C and a line AB okay so first of all let's uh, draw these lines and plot these points I'll draw a straight line of any length and name it as A and B correct then what I'll do is I'll take any point so I've taken this point and from there I will draw a perpendicular to the line AB Okay, so I'll mark this point as the point which is given that is C. Point C. Okay, now this there is one point that is moving somewhere uh, between this in such a way that it is always equidistant from this line as well as this point C. Now, what will be that point? So, first I need one point which is uh, which will be the reference point. So, for that what I will do is, I will find out the midpoint of this line. Why the midpoint of this line? Say on this line, uh, 
I am marking this as D. Say C D on this line. Uh, D is on A B. So a point which is between exactly between C and D follows the condition of the question that it is equidistant from point C as well as from line A B. So I will mark a point on this. How will I do that? I will make a perpendicular bisector and first from here. So I made a perpendicular bisector and what I'll do is I'll mark point midpoint that will be named as P. So this is the point P which is there. So this point will be on the curve that is there. Why? Because it is equidistance from point C as well as from point D which is our required condition. Now what we need to do is we need to find other points as well. So for doing that I will take say some equal distances from P on PC. One. Okay, I'll take a little bit smaller. Any any radius, just mark two or three arcs. Okay, so I'll just enlighten them so that you know that these are the arcs that have been marked. And I will name them as one two and three okay now from these one two and three i will draw straight lines upwards up that is perpendicular to cd okay first on one then on two then on three okay so now what I need to do next is I need to find out what points will be coinciding with the as uh, condition that it is equidistance from C as well as from the point uh, D which is 